and uh, now we're going to have a discussion on a fiqh um, topic. Welcome, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing today? How are you doing Fine. this morning? Alhamdulillah. Thank Good. you very much. Are you ready much. for our question? Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Thank you so much. Um, so this morning, Brother Bilal, you can read the question out. Right All right. No problem. So, Sheikh, we have a, a question from an anonymous viewer, and it reads, um, There is a brother that I really would like to marry, but he is the wrong color in my parents' eyes and is a widower with a, with a young child who is two years older than me. How important is it um, t for me to receive my father's blessings? My father will never give in or never give his blessings as he is being impossible and I don't want to marry anyone else. Uh, I make my own money and I'm 31 years old. And this is from, as I said, a sister in the UK, who, uh, anonymous sister in the UK. Hmm. There's a lot of sections in this question, Sheikh. Help, help us out, help us out. Uh, help her out, really? <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> Someone's the wrong colour, I don't know what the right yeah, colour uh, is. I yeah. actually wanted to understand, I, I don't understand what's the meaning of wrong colour. Yeah. W what's that, by the way? I don't know. Because Allah's is the it? best of all colours, right? Indeed. Allah created all the colours, so I don't the indeed. wrong, the right, but... Indeed. There is no right, wrong colour. No. Yeah. Not in Islam, but maybe in, she did specify in her dad's eyes. Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe. But maybe, maybe to start uh, maybe, yeah. our morning in a, in a positive note, here maybe wrong colour is uh, a expression maybe they use at the house to say someone who is not fitting within their kind of un uh, 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 understanding. However... Uh, and that could be actually a wrong colour in terms, it could be <coughs> sort of an Asian family with a, even a, a white person or, you know, it, could, it doesn't matter which colour they're saying, it's mm. just not an appropriate anyway. That's indeed, right. indeed. And, and maybe just to add to that, Islam doesn't encourage the idea of racism. Because mm. uh, if you look at the life of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, you could see him with his companions from all over the world, if I can say. Yeah. And Imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, not only that their companions were from different uh, ethnicities, but even they married, some of the Imma alayhim salam, they themselves had features of uh, people who are not from Makkah in Medina, for mm -hmm, example, mm -hmm, Africans, mm -hmm, and you have mm -hmm. ladies from Africa who were married by Imams alayhim mm -hmm. salam. So Islam doesn't entertain yeah. the issue of color because of colors marriage can't happen that's uh, very wrong and maybe to 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 say that someone uh, as a parent uh, as a father or mother if they have this idea and notion that we will marry our children only to a certain people from certain uh, background because of color then they're committing haram because this racism is haram in Islam. So what does a child do where we're taught to respect our parents, that we need their blessings, we need their du'as, and they're saying, okay, this person's, I mean, it could be anybody, it could be an Arab, non-Arab, <coughs> it could be, and it, everyone is, is, is you know, pr precious about their own <coughs> community. So what is a child's responsibility that the parents are committing a haram, yeah. you, as you just said? Yeah. So what can that child do in the context? There is a saying, and uh, according to some scholars, they say it is hadith or principle in yeah. terms of yeah. uh, understanding Islamic law, which says, لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق. لا طاعة, there is no obedience لمخلوق for any human being في معصية الخالق. If that obedience will go against the obedience of Allah, you are not allowed to obey someone if your obedience will make you to go against the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So any child who is, for example, forced to marry someone in a haram way, and this is to go against to Allah's orders, then that kind of obedience is haram. Yes, I understand maybe because of uh, the question here, I need to obey my parents. That's good. Right. But if you are obeying your parents, for you to, to disobey Allah, you need to bring Allah first before your parents. Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. So in, in terms of marrying, will it be haram if uh, this particular individual decides to marry without the blessings of the father or blessings of the mother? Of course the marriage will be okay. Mm. But she's not been, it sounds as if, uh -huh. She's not being married before, okay. but she's 31 and she makes her own money. Okay. Does she need her father's permission? Is she seen as Rashida? 
or how does it how does it play out? Yeah, very important issue here. There are there are, there are many issues as you said. Number one, the the idea that any girl, in order for him for her to be married, she needs blessings. She needs uh, wilaya of the parents, of the father or grandfather, and so on and so forth. Nowadays, yes, we understand this principle is there. La nikaha illa biwali. There is no any marriage which will take place for a girl except by, through the permission of his, uh, uh, her father. So the wilaya, the authority of a father, authority of a grandfather, if they are Muslims, needs to be looked into. However, if uh, we look at modern days life, where a girl, for example, reaches the age where she can support herself, in this case, this, yes. this particular individual can support herself. Most of our Maraji, they say, if she can support herself, she doesn't even need the wilaya of the parents here. Why? Because sometimes they, they may want something which she doesn't want, and uh, it, it may cause trouble after the marriage also. So she's matured enough, she can uh, agree on, uh, she can decide whatever she wants to do in her life. Of course, there are issues of akhlaq which needs to be looked at. For example, after the marriage, how and what kind of relationship will be between the husband mm -hmm. and the in-laws, the children and their grandparents. So this need, needs to be looked at. But in terms of committing haram, there's no any haram here if she decides to marry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Inshallah, that's good. That's a good starting point. So in terms of the marriage itself, I just, um, I think probably people feel guilty that they don't want to upset their parents. Mm. Um, they are so precious to us. Is there an effect on the marriage's blessings in the future, do you think? If she, is maybe that's part <coughs> of what her guilt is. Yeah, if we talk about blessings uh, in terms of rida, mm. um, many children may stop to decide for their own future of their lives because of this idea of we want the blessings of the parents. But the blessings of the parents need to, to look at their, the well-being of the children. In this case, this girl here, if she says, well, I fear I, w I'm, I may not have the blessings of my parents, uh, so I have to abide by their blessings and so on and so forth, we need to say that the happiness is here. The happiness which will accompany this lady is very important. If, in this case, she's matured enough yes. and she, she has come to a point of thinking that this is the man I need to spend the life with. It is my happiness which I, I, I need to look at. It is me who is going to live with this particular individual, not my parents. So she needs to, to, to kind of try to talk to the parents to convince them. If eventually it comes to a, a, a standstill where... Yeah. Log ahead, no movement. Log ahead, no, no movement. movement. Yeah. It is her decision which needs to be looked at. Mm. She can involve Maulana, Sheikh, uh, and scholars to help her. But if she decides to go on with the blessing, uh, with the marriage, the idea of blessings will cause trouble to mm. my, ma my marriage. It's not there okay. within Islam. What about the fact that her <coughs> potentially her stepdaughter will be her senior by two years. Mm. I don't know if it's a, even a thick issue, but if you could just comment on that, because it, it's not common that you know you marry somebody with a child and the child is older than you, but is it bad, good? Well, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, it, it depends with the, the, the uh, if you can say, what kind of preparation she has decided to prepare in order for her to enter into this kind of yeah. uh, relationship. However, Islam doesn't say it is haram, because there's a daughter who is uh, of this older, age, yeah, yeah. no, no problem at all. And, and sometimes it happens that the relationship between this particular lady, for example, and that particular child may become a, a very strong yeah. kind of yeah. bond. And uh, It could work both ways, right? It because can. if they're the same age group, yeah. one could feel jealous and there's a rivalry, or it could be like they become like sisters because they got a lot in common because they're from the same generation. So Indeed. you just don't know. Yeah, if indeed. The personalities match. It could be really helpful. Yeah, sure. So she needs to prepare the ground and to say that this is what I'm going to work in order for us to live a happy life together. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of halal haram, Islam allows it. It is mubah to enter into that kind of uh, 
relationship. This is known as permissible. The permissibility is there, so there's no any issue with that. Excellent. I think we have a caller um, okay. on line one. Assalamu alaikum. Said Ali, you have a question for the Sheikh? Yes, yeah, Assalamu alaikum. My Ali name is Said Ali, and um, Wa alaikum uh, I'm a Said, and my parents want me to marry a Said girl. In fact, they've rejected actual women due to the fact that they're not Said. And it's been very hard for me. And I was wondering, I mean, is this allowed? Um, you know, can I go against their wishes? Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Subhanallah. This is, quite, um, this is an ongoing issue. It's very, very tough. Yeah, yeah this is one of those tough issues. Uh, thank you very much, Sayyid Ali. Uh, number one, are you allowed to marry non Sayyid? What do we do? Look at the life of the Imam, alayhi salam, to there get you our are. evidence in? There you are. If we talk about Sunnah of the Holy Prophet, Sunnah of uh, um, uh, Imam, alayhi salam, they are Sunnah. They married people from their families or what you call relatives mm -hmm. as well as outside. And most of the time they married outside their, their uh, clan or their clans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I intercept there? Yeah, sure. So my family are also say it. Okay. And um, we have this issue. We have had it. Um, so one of the things that was brought up as um, a, a, a justification for Sayyid girls not to marry out is the fact that Imam Musa Ghazim had seven, 17 daughters mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who weren't married okay. because there were no suitable Sayyid men. Has this been proven that Imam alayhi salam said, I'm not going to marry my children to non Sayyids? Can, can we get a statement from Imam alayhi salam? Or is it something which we say to qualify whatever understanding is there? I, 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 I can challenge this. Mm. No, any imam would say, I'm not going to marry my children. They will die without husband because there's no su suitor there. There's no Sayyid there. No. Imam Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, he married his girls to many who are not Sayyids. Mm. Imam Hassan al Mujtaba, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, all of them. So for us to bring our own narrow understanding in, in, into the major issues of religion, I think this is wrong. We look at the lives of our maraji now, 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 our maraji. These are our scholars. You go to their makatib offices, you will see and you will hear that this particular individual has married a, a daughter of this Sayyid. So it's not something which we can say it is haram, we are not supposed to do that. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says clearly, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَا دِينَهُ وَخُلُكَهُ أَوْ خُلُكَهُ وَدِينَهُ فَزَوِّجُهُ If someone comes to you to extend a hand of marriage to you and you are happy with two things, religion as well as morality, akhlaq, marry him to your daughters. And then, and then he says, إِلَّا تَفَعْلُ أَوْ إِلَّا تَفَعْلُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ if you are not going to do that, there will be two things, fitna and fasad. Fasad, corruption. Fitna, we know fitna. Mm. There will be calamities. And today, We've men... We've seen this, Sheikh. We've seen it. This has come true. Indeed. This is hadith from Ma'asum, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our sisters suffer because why? There is no any Sayyid to marry them. So Sayyid Ali, if he doesn't find a, 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 a Sayyid sister... Sayyid Ali will die without marrying. Or he'll marry someone who may not have religion yes. and morality. Yeah, just but his parents will be happy. And that's another point. Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam says clearly Imam Zainul Abidin, according to this which is known as Hadithul Qudsi. And Al Jannah to Hakun Liman Atwaani Walaukana Abdan Habashia, Wanaru Hakun Liman Aswani Walaukana Sayyidan Karashia. Paradise will be the right of a person who obeys Allah to enter into paradise even though that person is a slave from Habasha, from Ethiopia, from Africa. Mm. Paradise is his right because he obeys Allah. Hell is the right of anyone who disobeys Allah even if he is a chief from Quraysh. So we have these, yeah. these, these mm. uh, understandings which are from our Aima alayhi salam. You know what? 
religion will be easy so long as we practice it according to Rasulullah and Aima alayhi musalam. It will be difficult for us if we bring our own understanding. Definitely. And I don't know why people have come nowadays to say, well, there's no marriage between Sayyids and non-Sayyids. This is from us, not from Rasulullah, not from Aima alayhi musalam. Islam is clean, pure. Let us practice it in its purity. Absolutely. And then we'll find. Absolutely. And I think, I think you know, you, you've s it's explained it so eloquently that if we had, we, we um, observe the, the teachings of Ahl Bayt, the Holy Prophet, how they live, our lives would be more enriched. And perhaps you wouldn't see these increased divorce rates mm. if we followed mm. those paths of religion and piety and morality. <coughs> Rather than looking at the superficial factors that Indeed. may not make us happy. But which which lead to fitna and fitna. facade. Yeah. Fitna and fitna facade, fitna fitna There are many, many sisters nowadays, they reach the age of above 40. Nobody's marrying them. Why? Because there's no Sayyid here. There's no someone from our clan. You know what will happen eventually? So even this Sayyid has to come from this particular village and that Sayyid has to come from this particular family. Yeah. Where can Problem. we find it? Problem. Islam is the religion of all mankind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what? Universality, if we talk about universality of Islam, Allah is universal because he's Rabbul Alameen. Yes, Rabbul sir. Alameen cannot segregate between yeah. the people. Rasulullah came to practice that religion. A'imma alayhi musalam. When we talk about the Imam of our time, that he will have people who will follow him, 313, do we want to say that all of them will be Sayyids? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you much. So all much. we have time Thank for. You. So Is Sayyid Ali enough. and um, our original, um, both permissible for them to marry. I'm in Shalom Indeed. for the good reasons, the right reasons. Um, thank you so much again. Most welcome. Um, Shalom, we'll see you another morning. Ahsan to me, Shukran. And so up next. Nutrition and a healthy heart. So we hope to see you after the break.